Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks to JS Comp. Um, I'm going to try and the first part of the slides uh, hopefully is going to be somewhat entertaining. It's kind of a reminiscence of this conference uh, and some other just some sort of getting started stuff. Uh, so first of all, a great big thanks to uh, Jean-Charles Sisk, who's a teammate of, of ours on the Kraken team, who got this slot and then gave it to me. He's not here. He, he had to leave early. Uh, and he sent us this picture in Slack, and he actually was not wearing a shirt. So I did everybody a favor and just really quickly put a, put a shirt on him. He's got so much chest hair, it almost looked like he had a sweater on, but still it was too much. <laughs> okay, also, it's, it's been a long conference, and at this point, uh, for those of you who, who have families that didn't travel with you, uh, I'm sure you missed them. I miss my daughter, the movie star, and my son, the movie star. It's unfortunate. Uh, Max, Max gets two pictures because he's, he's something. So that's him trying on my shorts. <laughs> Took a while, right? OK, uh, so another kind of reminiscence is that I, I grew up in the 80s, as, as um, a lot of us did. Uh, and there was aspects of the 80s that still today seem like they didn't ever happen, and they might not ever happen. But they happened, or they seem to have happened. And that's the thing about nostalgia is that you know, when something's happening, it's hard to tell that it's this magical thing. It's only later on you look back and you kind of pick that out as a time period and say, you know, this thing, this thing was pretty special. Um, in fact, when I, during the 80s, I was spending a lot of time trying to pretend it wasn't happening because some of that, you know, some of the culture was, it felt, you know, it kind of felt wrong in a way. Uh, but in any case, in the future, uh, keyboards will be held like guitars. It's hard to imagine, but it will happen someday. Cops will wear Toms, so no socks, and they'll drive Ferraris. There will be a media channel devoted to music videos. And cars will have gull wing doors, and people will dress up in the desert. Star Wars movies will be good, so you've got to look forward to that. OK, my point. I sort of made it. Part of my point is that when I, when I get a few drinks in me, I'll pick a ridiculous premise like the 80s is the future, and I'll try to defend that while everybody around looks at me like I'm crazy. So just wanted to bring that to you. That happened a couple of nights ago. Um, so let me move on into what's happened at PayPal since we started using um, Node.js. Uh, it, it came in as a, as a prototyping framework. Uh, so uh, some people came over from Netflix, uh, Bill Scott, Jeff Harrell, Eric Toth. And they, they basically said, hey, we, we want to transform um, you know, what's going on at PayPal in a lot of ways. And part of that is the technology. So let's see if we can build uh, you know, a product faster with Node.js than we're able to with Java. Uh, and that's something that happened. And there's some talks around that. Uh, Jeff's given some talks about that. So I'm not going to go into great detail. Uh, but the result was that we started developing all of our products, all of our web and mid-tier products on Kraken.js, which sits over Express. Um, so what that left us with was uh, people writing applications in JavaScript, uh, but still writing the automation tests uh, using Java, using the framework that we use to write tests in Java. Um, so before I get to that, uh, if you weren't here for Dave Cadwallader's talk earlier, he showed the, the testing pyramid where UI tests sit at the top. Uh, and that, that's a great pyramid, and, and some people at PayPal li like to use that. Um, analogy as well. It's not in my slides, but I just wanted to say, you know, I agree with that as well. That UI tests, you know, are important and they sit, you know, on the top. They shouldn't be everything you rely upon. Uh, so why why should you test? Well, let's take an analogy. Uh, so here's John Charles Sisk again, and this is from a golfing uh, excursion that I wasn't on yesterday, I guess. Uh, but we'll use golf as an analogy for for web development or uh, product development, and uh, these guys who went golfing are some of the best developers we have at the company. So let's say they're the best golfers that you could possibly have. So they went to the golf course with their golf sticks <laughs> to knock the ball into the, into the, the goal. Um, so here, here's them starting out. They're having a great day. They're, they're developers. Look at that. That's beautiful form, right? So. You know, they're great. They should never make any mistakes because you're going out, you're golfing, everything's fine. You know how to golf. You're a great golfer. Okay, well, but sometimes you don't have your best day. Sometimes, you know, maybe you stayed up the night before or you're just, you're a little bit distracted. So mistakes get made. And, uh, 
sometimes side effects get uh, introduced into your code. So, call that the side effect. Anyway, okay, and here's, here's Jeff taking a swing. <laughs> so, why test? Well, even great developers have their days when something gets through, right? So that, that's why test. Oh, and sometimes turtles end up on the golf course as well. Moving fast for a turtle, right? Okay, so let's test, finally. Uh, Selenium 101, for those of you who don't kind of use it on a day-to-day -day basis or have a lot of familiarity with it, is this fairly complex system uh, whereby you've got your language binding on the left there uh, where you write your tests, whether it's in Java, Python, JavaScript. Uh, and then you've got JSON wire protocol that communicates with some sort of intermediary, like a, a browser driver, so it might communicate with the driver on your system itself. Um, or it might uh, communicate with the cloud that then opens up another target and does some stuff. Um, so this, this is just kind of, again, kind of 101 and there's the, the rabbit in the hat because to me the stuff to the right is magic and it works or there's bugs and sometimes you have to kind of figure out where, you know, which of those components has a bug and report it to the Selenium team. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to be on the, the, the left side. So where does Nemo fit? Uh, it fits on this, this, this left side. Uh, where the language bindings were. So Selenium WebDriver is an NPM module that, that has the JavaScript bindings uh, and it starts uh, you know, a server if necessary. It sets capabilities, uh, it provides the WebDriver API and it, uh, it you know, gives you the, the tool set you need to execute commands and control a browser or device. Um, so what Nemo does is it sits around that. It's, it's a wrapper uh, that basically gives you some tools for configuring that web driver uh, and also gives you a plug-in capability so that you can kind of make the system that you need. It's, it's nothing but giving you the tools to make the system that you need uh, and, and you know, we're going to look at some of the plugins that I've made um, that I think make the most sense. But the idea is that anybody can come and make their own set of plugins to do, to do the things that they need to do. Uh, so the, the plugin that I use primarily is called Nemo View, which we're going to go into, and uh, you know, other plugins. So whatever you want to put in there, whatever you need, kind of a thing. Uh, on top of that, so at this point we're just launching a web driver, we're just launching a browser and running commands, but you still have to have some sort of a test runner like Mocha uh, or Cucumber or Jasmine or whatever. Uh, so that's something, but again, Nemo isn't prescribing what you use, it's just saying here's, here's this piece of it now, you know, you use your test runner. We, we like to use Mocha, so all of my examples use Mocha. Uh, and then on top of that, you need a task runner, usually. And at PayPal, uh, we've been using Grunt a lot. People are, are poking around with Gulp, and obviously for uh, private projects, people are, but it's not, at least within PayPal, it's not being heavily used yet. Um, and then I, I heard of one called Broccoli, but I haven't looked into it um, yet. So you need kind of all these components to make a full automation solution. And if you look at the Selenium WebDriver example script uh, for how to get started in JavaScript, this is the, the basic uh, script that you see. So what we wanted to do was to take it from here to here so that all this, all this other stuff, like you see a lot of configuration here, um, is put somewhere else. So this is basically what a, what a Nemo um, you know, installation might look like. And then of course we want to add some error handling into the, into the callback because often you know, if the configuration's wrong, you're going to get an error back, and if you don't do this, you're not going to see it. Okay, so again, we're going to recircle back. What does Nemo do? It loads JSON configuration using a module uh, called Confi, which is used within uh, Kraken as well. Uh, it basically does uh, JSON, but it does overrides, and it also has something called shortstop handlers, which makes the, um, it just gives you a lot of dimensions of control when you're, when you're doing your configuration. So Nemo also takes that configuration and it starts the web driver. It initializes your plugins and uh, provides you access to that, to that whole API, the Nemo API. Uh, so first of all, it gives you the web driver API on the namespace that it gives you back. You get the .driver and .wd, which are the two major components of the, the Selenium web driver API. Uh, so let's talk about Confi for a minute just to, to, to explore how the configuration works. 
So config gives you something called the, the node env override. So the, the value of the node env uh, variable in your environment can determine uh, sort of what overrides get used in your, in your configuration. And on top of that, it uses something called uh, shortstop and shortstop handlers, uh, which was also built by the Kraken team. And these would be uh, values that you put in your JSON where if a, a handler is um, encountered, so let's say that a JSON value has this uh, handler env, then the shortstop's gonna look in the environment for this, this variable foo and replace in the JSON that value. So these shortstop handlers do various things. There's env, path, argv, and config that, that basically take your JSON and make it a lot more intelligent and again, give you more dimensions of control over your configuration. Uh, so what, what your configuration directory might look like if you're using Nemo uh, would be that you'd have your main config.json and then you'd have other environment uh, specific uh, override files like here we've got iOS driver, local, perfecto mobile, sauce labs. It just it depends on what you're doing, what, what those might be. And to give some sense of what the configuration would look like, uh, just your basic configuration tells the driver to launch this browser. And then there's the plugins and the data um, uh, properties, which, which are optional, but we'll get into those a bit later. Uh, and Sauce Labs might look more like this, where we're telling the web driver some other stuff, like, you know, what's my Sauce username, what's my Sauce key? And you can see that we're using the env shortstop handler so that our, you know, on your local machine, you've got your key, you know, there, but it's not checked into source control. Uh, so there's like a Sauce Labs kind of config. And Perfecto Mobile, um, is another, another cloud-based testing service and they use a, a different set of capabilities. Uh, iOS driver, the same thing. You're just basically giving the web driver different stuff to, to contact a different um, driver. Uh, so really quickly, we're gonna do a, a screencast, which hopefully you can see if you're sitting a bit far away. I'll try and zoom in if it makes sense at times. So this is an example that comes in the Nemo repository. If you clone it, there's just an examples directory and here we're giving a, uh, a base directory into the Nemo constructor, which isn't standard, uh, but just in terms of showing an example, this is, this is one way to do it. And if you look in that directory that it's pointing to, there's this config.json, uh, and it's got a, a, the driver section and a browser section. And we're just gonna go ahead and run that and see what browser we open. So Firefox opens up, we got a little printout that says um, successfully launched Firefox. So if we set uh, the node environment variable to special, let me get in on that a little bit. So this time we launched PhantomJS just by uh, resetting the, uh, the node environment variable. And that's because in this special.json, in the driver section, we're um, specifying PhantomJS. So that's to illustrate the, the environment variable uh, type of override. So the next thing is that, uh, notice that there's this shortstop handler here that says config colon browser. So that's the that's shortstop handler that's saying, look, look for this browser configuration property and get that value. Uh, and another feature of shortstop is that if you have something at the base of your JSON, you can override it with an argv or an environment variable. So we're gonna show that by specifying argv to Chrome and launch Chrome instead. You can also set an environment variable of browser and do the same thing. So this is, this is just a little uh, config trick that I wanted to show you. So now we're saying phantom.js in the environment variable and that should launch PhantomJS so we won't actually see a browser open. And then just uh, to kind of drive the point home, if you use both at the same time, if you use an environment variable of browser and an argv of browser, uh, which one would, would take precedence? And I think most people would expect that uh, the argv would, would take precedence, which it does. So we launched Chrome in that last example. So that is just a quick intro to basically how you can do file-based overrides and a little bit of shortstop handler uh, business within, um, within Nemo. 
the second uh, major component of Nemo is plugins. So let's talk about those. What would be in a plugin? You might have a web driver abstraction, so some uh, combination of things that make sense together. You might put user interactions together in a plugin because you want to share it between projects. Uh, or if you're a company that does stuff internally for testing, you might put proprietary sort of functionality in a plugin. And a plugin basically looks something like this, where you've got a, uh, a setup function that gets exported from your module, and that setup function just has a simple signature of, of taking the Nemo object and a callback, uh, and then you add something to the Nemo namespace. So for example, uh, sorry, example, uh, Nemo.login is saying that when the Nemo object gets resolved, now we've got this Nemo.login uh, namespace. In, in this case, it's a function uh, that, that's going to log you in. So I just you know, put a comment in there and said, this is WebDriver stuff that will log you in. So that's basically uh, what, what a plugin looks like. And if you want to configure a plugin, you just add it to the, to the configuration. You say, uh, my, my plugin's called login, and the module is either somewhere in my file path, or it's actually a module in my dependency tree. In this case, it's in the file path. And to use it, once you've got Nemo resolved and, and back to you, you just call it Nemo.login and you pass whatever parameters. So that's how you author, register, and use a plugin. And the plugin that I authored to be sort of our you know, favorite or promoted web driver abstraction is called Nemo View. And if you look at the, here's sort of three levels. The first level is what you would do in, in basic web driver to find an element and click on it. Uh, the second line is what you do with Nemo view if you use these underscore methods that just take a, a simplified locator. Uh, basically, we're providing a CSS locator, and then you can click on it. And then the third level is if you use the uh, locator abstraction, which will namespace uh, sets of locators. So in this case, Nemo.view.nav bank is just going to give you back your web element, and then you click on it. So these are sort of the three layers. Um, and I think you'd probably agree that the third is, is more uh, palatable than the first. So we'll, we'll drill into that a little bit. First of all, uh, this is how you would register Nemo View. It's a module from NPM, so it would look like this. You, you say, I have this View plugin with module of Nemo View. And uh, what it gives you by default is it gives you these basic abstraction methods. Uh, that, that you uh, supply just a string to, and then you get, you get your element back. So there's find, finds, present, visible, wait, wait, visible, and first visible. The last two are kind of the, the ones that I use a lot for uh, asynchronous testing. That way you don't do stuff like put, you know, 10 second timeouts between this command and, you know, wait for the next thing, because that's always going to be brittle. So for example, uh, this is adding a bank in the sample application that we're going to see in a minute. Um, and I'll just kind of leave it there for a second so you can take a look. Okay, so the next layer, if you're not just using the, the generic abstractions, is to say I want to have a set of locator files to store my locators in so that they're shareable across uh, files and locations. So I'm going to uh, specify this uh, argument to Nemo View that says, look in this directory, there's some files there you should be interested in. So there's this locator directory uh, that you should look at. So here's an example of a locator file. It's just a simple JSON. And you can see that it's got a type and a locator. So this is just defining uh, elements for, in this case, a, um, uh, a, bank, a bank form. So there's a number, routing, button, and then success and failure. And we'll see how those are used in a minute. So what happens is that Nemo View is going to generate uh, functions. That's something JavaScript is great at. It's generating dynamic functions for each of the locators. So look at uh, the number. And for, for the number, you're going to get all these functions back. You're going to get um, the, the basic one, which returns the web element, and then all these other ones uh, that can do different things. So this is what it looks like to add a bank uh, using, using that view. So you're, you're, uh, we're just setting a couple of convenience fun uh, variables. And then we're uh, using the, the Nemo view methods to work through that, that UI. Okay, so let's really quickly, this is about a five minute demo. It's going to basically cover those points that I covered and we'll just do it again using the sample app. This is something you can clone right now and, and NPM install and just get it running. What it is, is it's called PayFriend, so it's like a little mini kind of PayPal 
uh, type of application with, uh, with async, it looks like one page application behavior. So it gives you like a three second wait between each activity. So you can say fail at fail.com and it will fail login and anything else would be success. And then there's a couple of forms. There's adding a card and adding a bank and both of those also have the sort of success and failure scenarios. So 1001001 one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one is the failure number and anything else is success for these, for these forms and you can log back out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to walk through sort of the, the timeline of how you would test an application. So for example, um, and this is just the, the configuration again, uh, but when you first start testing an application, um, you're just kind of writing the test on the fly. You're just throwing the script together. Uh, so it would look something like this generic spec where, you know, your locators are just right, right in the file. Everything's just kind of like a big script. Literally, it's, it's just a big functional script. So this is kind of what it looks like. So you're using the generic methods to, to run through the UI, to, uh, to log in, add a card, add a bank account, Okay, so we're going to run that, and it's uh, using the Mocha runner on WebStorm. And it just runs through all those scenarios. And you can use any, you don't have to use CSS locators, you can use um, ID locators or any, any of the other available uh, Selenium locators. Okay, so the next step of, of, of testing an application once, once the UI starts to harden a bit is that you say, well, I want to start taking these locators out and I want to start putting them in a shareable location. And that's where we would start using um, locator files. So again, we're, we're telling Nemo, or Nemo View rather, to look for these JSON files in this directory. So we've got, uh, this is bank, card, login, and nav. So these are basically, in, in my mind, when I, when I uh, split this application up, those were the four parts of it. And here's all the locators that you would need. And, and this would be the next step of the testing process where now we're using the, um, the locator files instead of the, uh, the, the generic methods. So we're using the login view, the card view, the nav view, and the bank view to run the test now. So I'm just pointing out that there's the email locator and then there's all these functions that, that are built off of the email locator like wait visible. So if the page is loading, it'll wait until it sees that element before it moves on and does these other things. And just to compare it back again, that's the generic spec. So we'll run the view-based one. And I didn't mention it, but we're, I did mention it. We're using Mocha to run these tests, so you'll see Mocha syntax around the, the web driver commands. Okay, so the final step in, in cleaning all this up is to say now I want to take similar functionality and group it together in different modules. So for example, uh, I made this file navigate.js uh, that has all my navigation commands in it and is using uh, the navigation view uh, and some of the other views to, to do its work. 
Um, so this, this is, you know, you could do it however you want in your own project, but this is the pattern that I recommend to people, which is, uh, you know, create these, these flow files, I call them, and, and kind of group similar functionality together. And then when you write your tests, uh, the, the actual um, code that you write is going to look very semantic and it's going to be pretty explanatory as far as what your test is doing. So here I'm pulling in these three uh, modules. I'm puffing them up with the Nemo object when Nemo resolves. And then in the actual test itself, you can see again, this is very, uh, I mean, it's almost, I mean, you, you could read it even if you didn't know JavaScript. Okay, we're logging in failure, success, for card adding success and failure, uh, bank success and failure. And as you can imagine, it's all going to work because this is a screencast and I like to stay away from the demo, you know, the demo demons. So that's basically a walkthrough of Nemo View and, and the way that you would go from the first writing of your test to the third where everything's packed away in a nice way and, and reusable. Okay. And just a reminder at this point, is that this is, this is how I train people to use Nemo within PayPal. That doesn't mean this is the way that you would have to use it. Nemo, again, is just a simple uh, web driver abstraction that, that allows you to, uh, to add plugins and do the configuration using Confi like we talked about before. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I've, I have seen and I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, examples of how to use it from other people who start to add their favorite modules and their favorite you know, tasks and, and test runners around it. And to get started, to look at that stuff and to play around with the code that we looked at today, you just have to clone uh, the Nemo example app. And we're looking for contributors. And I didn't, I didn't mention it at the outset, but Nemo is actually named after Captain Nemo, the, the scary sea captain guy, and not the little fish. So here's Captain Nemo uh, looking for contributors. And what we're looking for is help doing stuff like uh, fixing the generator. We have a yeoman generator, but it's not generic enough, so I didn't really want to promote it today. Um, it, does, it does do some things, but not to the point where I really want to talk about it. Uh, some gulp examples, some mobile examples would be nice. Um, and uh, we heard about Magellan earlier today, so maybe that's something we could integrate in the future as well. Uh, but we'd have, to, we'd have to look into that. And I think that's my last slide. Ask me for a sticker. I've got, I've got stickers up here with the little guy on them. So that's it. Okay.